we we're professionals and we're like oh no no connection hold on one second fuck my shit has been doing that too won't let me go live on facebook no, Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message. Get your originally talk to this cat. All right. Because he's just going straight to voicemail. That's the number I have. Hit the call button. I did. Now. That's it. Yeah. Hey, Kern, how you doing? True Powers Mind from the other hey. morning show. I got Dimebag, Darley, and Cobra Immortal in the house. Are you there? Hey, what's up? Hey, hey what's Good. up? Hey, turn that volume up on that. Hold on, we got you on uh, Dimebag's phone here. Because my little device finally killed it. Well, you should be good now. All right, should be good now. What did you do? Hey, you there? Yep. Yeah, you hear me? Yeah, 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 we hear you. Hey, I just want to start off by thanking you, Kern, for coming on the show tonight. You know, dropping some of this knowledge you have. You know, me and Kern actually talk off the phone, off the show here. And this brother here got so much good knowledge for all of us to hear. You know, and uh, I know a lot of us meat eater, carnivorous people, you know, we sometimes find it uncomfortable talking to vegans because we think that they're going to come at us like we're, you know, they're snobs or they're better than us. But this brother here comes with truth. He comes down to earth and he's just a great fucking human being. Um, we're going to go live in like a couple of minutes. I got to go get something that we need and then we can go live in like a couple of minutes. Is that fine? Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm, technically, I'm live on Facebook now. We, so. Facebook, on my channel. Facebook my channel only gets these extra bits. Facebook, that, you know. Facebook gets the behind-the-scenes chaos and stuff, and hopefully somebody will volunteer their time to help the brothers <laughs> out. <laughs> All these cameras, it's, it's like we're in some sort of bat cave here. <laughs> it is. One, two, three, four, five. And he's grabbing hey, something else. Hey, man, you want another beer? Yes, sir. I'm so, okay. All right, so uh, you have any good news for everybody out here in, uh, in the world? What you got going on with the music? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, shout out to True Powers, man. Uh, yeah, it's your boy, Cobra Immortal. We live Facebook on a Friday. Um, yeah, I got a lot of stuff going on. I released two singles um, on SoundCloud, and they'll be available for iTunes and Apple Music. The two singles I released is Break the Rules. Break the Rules is... Like kind of like a rock, a rap rock song um, is doing very well right yeah, now. Good, good. And then uh, I also have a masterpiece. Uh, it's a single that's produced by Nick Machete. Shout out to Nick Machete. And uh, it's it's two great tracks. Uh, they'll be available for retail purchase on iTunes. Good. How much is that, brother? How much will it be? Uh, Ninety nine cents per track. You can't beat nine nights a dollar. Come on, man. Support Cobra. Yeah. Come you know on, y'all. A dollar per track. Uh, Working on getting some new videos out there. Um, like I said, new uh, music, of course. If you want to know more about Cobra Mortal, you can find me on iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, SoundCloud, Reverb Nation. Um, you can follow me on my social le social media links at Twitter, at Cobra Mortal, Instagram, at Cobra Mortal, and Facebook.com forward slash at The Real Cobra Mortal. And your boys... Constantly, always working hard, trying to uh, build new connects. We're trying to get, you know, a lot of our showcases up where we can hit places like California, Florida, Texas. Uh, we did last year. We was in New York. We was in Bridgeport, Connecticut. We was in Los Angeles. Cool, 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 um, cool. Shit, we're trying to go uh, nationwide, man. And like I said, it takes money and it takes a lot of time. To, uh, to do the things that you want to do, especially when you're doing it independently. So, uh, but yeah, we always working hard. Shout out, like I said, shout out Dimebag TV, Brother Darley. Uh, it's, it's, uh, shoot, that's how we do it. We always work. All right. So we now Dimebag's back in the house. Thank There's you, sir. Our beverages, and uh, we can do the show, y'all. 
Okay, all right. <clears throat> Got to do is just set it off. No, uh, the, yeah. Uh, hit start on there or something. Yeah. All right. All right. Today's date is the 13th. Bring right? it. Bring what? It's the bot. Friday the 13th, so there's it's a, a volume up. Oh, it's, I know. So there's a lot of there's a lot of ugly uh, people out there that need to audition for it's the uh, horror movies. It's the volume. <laughs> a lot it's of the, ugly people. It's the volume completely up on there. I don't like the sound. On uh, there. Yeah, the volume will be is completely up. I guarantee it. Only at the true power. My. Well, it's Friday, y'all, so another great show in the making. You know, it is. We're going to get the these morning show. Teach these fools about eating, eating right. More more importantly, just, just eating right. Unless you, you have to first start thinking right. If you can't think right, then you won't eat right. Period. All right. Are so, you there? You might have got a beverage or something. Let me give him a minute. Make sure your phone's active, though. My phone's ready to go, but I want him on the line and good before I click the live. Oh. Yeah. Well, Kern. Yeah. You there. All right, come on. Click right. live. Let's go. I'll do the spell. I'll let you introduce him. Let me go through the spell. Well, go through the spell and then give us like two or three minutes to go through our stuff and then we'll introduce you and we chop it up. All right. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's do it. I mean, I wish the value was a little louder, but I, I believe that everything should be cool. Uh, let me put this over here, just a little bit farther now. What do you think you need a line for that? Why I got it. I got it. I got it. Why don't we try it with the cable real quick? Now, that seemed to work better, anyway. So it was like more. When did we use the cable? Uh, use several it? times. I used it with John Lear and, and several other people. Uh, pull. Uh, grab the box and. There's a little side compartment. No, the other side right there. Pop that out. And then we can put that right on back up there. And Oh, it's been a great week, folks. I'm so glad it's Friday. Thank you. It's Friday. It's time to have some fun. All right. Yeah. Now, do you got the volume up on this? Oh, no. oh, oh sorry. Right. Karen, are you still there? Yeah. Oh, see, now we're down here on the no, Ask him. We're not even down here. It's coming. I up. hit the button. Right. I did that. Okay, Karen, you still there now? Nothing. Hello? I guess we should have just kept, you know, left alone with Bluetooth, dude. You there? Yeah, you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. And it actually does sound a little stronger. Uh, sounds a lot stronger. All right. Hold on. We're going live on Dimebag TV, the flagship. Yeah. Of course, we've been live for 15 minutes on the, you know, the the, the download, fucking <laughs> my channels and shit. It's the other morning show. It's Friday. It is Friday. And the this 13th. Is, yes. Of April. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not full. Man, we're it not is, It's going by fast, too. Okay. This whole year is going by fast, you know, and... and I just say it's been one hell of a year for me personally. The, the, all the <coughs> people I met, you know, from uh, Steve uh, Hindi that I just had on special report last uh, Tuesday with Shark showing animals kindness and respect, man. But we have the man, the legend, the bodybuilder, the guy that shows you that you can not eat meat and still get ripped. We got him on the phone tonight, so great show. We gotta let. Okay, uh, we're live. All right, good. Yeah. This is the other morning show. Um, True Power is mine. And I'm Don Bag Doily. It's your boy, Copa Mortal CI. And today is Friday, the 13th, April 2018. The, the year, year of, of our, our Lord. Lord. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, first of all, I want to just say thanks for everybody that supports the channel and the content that comes on the channel. Right. Um, special report. If you ain't seen Special Report, go over to True Power's Minds on YouTube. And check it out, or you can just, just wait. Just that Judge Joe Brown. Judge on. Joe Brown. Judge Joe Brown. Judge JB. Uh, 
If you don't want to go over there and you're too lazy, then you just wait and you can catch it reruns over her on Dime Dime Bag TV. TV. But let's face the fact, that's where all the subscribers at. But, uh, so it's going to be on Dime Bag TV. It's go, all good. Go over there to True Power's Mind, like and subscribe to the channel so when you don't have to wait a week. Ah. When when uh special report drops, you can watch it live. If not, you gonna wait until I decide to put it up. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, thanks for all the contributions we got this week. Yes, and we have several. And once again, you know, uh, I was talking to the, the the business guy. He was like, you know, we need to kind of hold off until that until that's. But they don't know what they contribute. Yeah, you they know? do, and we thank you seriously. Thank you. you know, folks. They could be bringing us a punch out. And, and what about the and folks and that have been contributing on Patreon? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you. So, thank you. And all my friends in Serbia, you know, and Lex so, on the Lion, the the channel. The, and um, I also want to throw out, you know, we all be free. Uh, check out that channel, you know. Uh, and please, folks, I'll drop it tonight. Special Report Tuesday. It's coming up Tuesday. I will have Professor Griff on special report. So Professor Griff, yes, sir. That's, Public enemy. That's why you got to go to True Powers Minds. I'm doing a couple of like things. Like and subscribe on their to the channel oh, so you can catch special report when it's live. Mm. Because if not, you're going to wait. Like yeah. I said, man, special report doing big things. Just had the honorable had John Judge Lear. J.B., John, John Lear, Lear. Yes. Professor Griff. I mean, Tuesday, this man's Professor doing Griff. It. Yeah, pay attention. And pay Jane attention. Elliott, if you're listening, I'm coming for you. And Wesley Snipes, I'm hunting you down, brother. I want you on the other morning show, if you're listening. And obviously, I want to give a shout-out to Mark from Anaheim. What's up, brother Mark? And I want to give a shout-out to Jimmy Blakely. Jimmy Blakely, yes, what's up? Doing your California. I just want to give a shout-out to all the supporters. Jacqueline yeah. uh, Badalera, the doctor. Dr. Jacqueline Badalera, mm -hmm. Jane Elliott, and a host, host of others. Thank you all for uh, all the, you know... For all the support. We're a small time operation, but we're trying to do big things. Tell them the importance yeah. about tonight's show. Well, tonight's show. Guests. Okay. Tonight's guest uh, came to my attention through one of our listeners. She emailed me and said, you should look at his work. And I reached out to Corin, And he actually responded back to me. And, we, and like I said, this guy is on point. And, and what ties is, is so funny. My, my son is basically a vegetarian. He will not eat meat to save his life. And I was grown up. I was taught. To be like, if you want to be big and strong, yeah, you got to eat meat. Right. But Corin, he shatters that myth. And he brings it back down to reality. And that's why I have so much respect for this brother. And, and, and I will honestly say, I consider him my friend. Because he has some great knowledge, some great information. You know, not only is he a veteran, not only is he a, a bodybuilder, but he's a decent human being. And we need more like him. Absolutely. Yep. Corn Sutton is on the line. What's up? How you How doing? You doing? How you doing? How you doing? Good. How you doing good, sir. I'm I don't awesome. know what's up with the volume now. It was strong, but now it's kind of weak or something. Wait. Oh, now, hold on. He's trying to go through Bluetooth. It's on the Bluetooth. Are you there? No, it's not hitting. It's not registering with it on the Bluetooth. It should. It was only registering because it was plugged in. All right. All right. Once again, we have some technical problems. And, you know, Overland or Overton from Chicago, don't give me no shit. I wrote to you, you know, you're like, you guys need to step up your game on the, you know, uh, I oh, guess the hard know. end of it. But, uh, oh, uh me see there. Corin, you're there? Did we lose him? Well, we might have lost him. No. No. We got to bump up the volume. The something. volume's all up. Everything's all up. you have good. it on Bluetooth? It's on Bluetooth. We just You had just it. cut it off. Now it's on. Yeah, he's not on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there you, can you hear us? Yeah, you hear me? Yeah, okay. we can hear you, but it's... The, the volume is really low. It seems like it's low. The volume's yeah, yeah, the volume's really low. We got all everything turned up on our end. You want me to grab my other phone real yeah. quick and see if it's a difference? You want... Yeah, it's good on my end. Yeah, uh, as long as it's good. Have, have on. 
Yeah, I mean, seriously, and honestly, folks, if you're watching the show, you need to put your earbuds in. You know, sometimes, you know, the audio is whatever, but as long as you have on your headphones, it's perfect. So, I think I think we're good to go. Okay. Leave a comment. If you watch, leave a comment in the section if the you audio, the audio is good. I can see the comments, man. Oh, do you, where? I can't see them. Well, you need to talk about the guests. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Corn, uh, will you uh, just briefly... Talk about, you know, all your past achievement. But the main thing I want to talk about is these corporate forms and how they are polluting our natural waterways and, more importantly, our well water, potentially. All right. Well, I mean, a quick introduction to myself is that I'm a pro vegan bodybuilder, three-time pro vegan bodybuilder. And also, I was in the military for about four years. There's like a background noise. I, yeah, I, that's what, hold on, let me get, hold on one second. I'm going to yeah. grab my other device and see if we can't do it a different way. Okay. I don't like this. Well, sorry about the technical difficulties, folks. But uh, it'd be like that sometimes when you, only so much duct tape you can use. So we working on it, just give us It'll a second. It'll be all right. Let's give us a second. All right. I mean, he can stay on the phone while I I do this aspect of it. You think that's what it is? Um, it could be. What's this one? Maybe you think because it's all the way over there? No, Bluetooth goes like hundreds of feet. No, I will, uh, let me see that piece of paper there real quick. Um, we'll keep going on the line, and then when this, uh, you're going to get a uh, restricted call on your other line. That would be me on the other line, so we got to see okay. if this does anything different. And then I can always take it from the headphones right there. I can't so. wait, I can't wait to see, read the comments when they, when they watch this video. Well, you know what? Like I said, man, it's all in real time. Like yeah, you, this is a... You actually get to see how right. things really are yeah. in real time. And that's what they need to... And maybe we real, can inspire realize. some, you know, younger people, you know, to have a better setup or whatever and, and still just discuss the same topics that we like, discuss. Right. It's like everybody... That's the key. That's key right there. We need yeah. to discuss the same stuff. Okay. I'm going to... Let me um, plug that in. The person you are trying to reach is not accepting calls at this time. Hold on. Please try your call again later. Yeah, no, we're going to call. We're going to try it right now. I did right. I didn't do that right. No, I'm just, no, I didn't. Hold on, hold on. See, I, I had to miss down. I had to miss down. Something happened. They won't return. They, 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 they been. Been giving us the runarounds. We called AS yeah. the other fucking day. <laughs> oh, he's still in the meeting. Let me go check. Like she really went somewhere, put the phone down, waited about two or three minutes. Stop, man. And then, oh, he's still in the office. He's Stop. Still, he's still in the meeting. Shoot, they're like, well, like the, okay, so they. The person so, you are trying so to reach is not, not accepting calls at this time. They they're not returning oh, your, call, your call. Hold on. Like they're trying hold to on. mess with y'all's. I, I did line it. of communication to get the true message out there. Right. To speak the truth. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? No. Yeah. yeah they she, they playing with us. You know. Yeah. She know he wasn't in no day on me, <laughs> man. This like yeah. what the fifth and sixth time we didn't contact the right. for a go. representative and they, and nothing. Okay. You know, Google. You guys got to fix your stuff a little better. You guys got to fix your stuff. Hello. Hello, Karen. Can you hear me? It's a little bit better. Yeah, it's a lot better. Yeah. There we go. So we got this one. All right. Well, welcome to the other morning show, Cher. Um, once again, we have a bodybuilder and a U.S. veteran uh, on the line, Corn Sutton. And uh, he's a vegan. He's a good man. A great man, actually. And, uh, you know, he's going to share some knowledge with us tonight. Will you give us a, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself before you go into... Going to everything uh, we have you on to talk about tonight? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. 
Uh, just a little bit about myself. I've been in the military for about eight years. I did four years in the United States Marine Corps for about four years fully active service. Thank you, sir. Also, I deployed to Operation Iraqi Freedom 3 and 4. Mm-hmm. And then I also did another four years in the Navy Reserves. So uh, that's that's pretty much it with my military life. But how I became vegan is uh, it was pretty much after the Navy. Uh, I heard the speech called the best vegan speech ever by Gary Yorofsky. He came into my classroom when I was going to school. And ever since then, that's when, uh, once I heard that speech, that's when I pretty much started my journey into the vegan diet. Uh, fast forward, a year fast forward. Then after that, uh, I wanted to do some type of activism. Mm-hmm. So for me, I decided to do uh, pro, uh, bodybuilding. I started to do bodybuilding. So uh, I've, been doing the, I've been doing bodybuilding for about I want to say someone between four or five years. And uh, from doing that, I already received uh, three pro cards and three natural organizations. And and from there, for work in my occupation, I also do training and also I'm a health coach too. So I do a lot of online training on bodyfitness.com and also I do a lot of uh, nutritional counseling and stuff like that. So I write a lot of meal plans and, and things like that. For a lot of people online and offline. Okay. Yeah, now, yeah. now, did you become? Now, did you become a? Uh, did you become a vegan before you started bodybuilding or, or after? Before. So I was vegan. I was vegan first, and then after that, like about a year, I want to say a year, maybe a couple months, uh, during that transition period, that's when I started uh, becoming started doing bodybuilding. Now, now, as a as a vegan, what what type of foods uh, do you eat? Because I know being a bodybuilder, you probably you probably need a, a a a high number of protein. What type of foods do you eat to supplement for the pro pro uh, protein? Besides, since you don't for eat protein. meat, yeah, for protein. Yeah, I mean for protein, there it's an abundance of different types of plant based foods. So you know you have your staple foods like. Tofu, beans, legumes, also seitan. Seitan is made out of wheat gluten, and you use seitan to make like artificial meat. Mm-hmm. So any type of uh, meat product you can think of, like pork, fish, chicken, ham, like whatever it is, uh, that you can make a vegan version out of it, pretty much. And also, there's tons of protein and a lot of uh, fruits, vegetables and grains as well so it's pretty much like having an abundance of different types of food and it all adds up at the end oh okay yeah so you're not messing around with that like protein supplement from gnc and all that crap only supplement i do take is like uh, one of my sponsors is called clean machine mm-hmm. and they but the supplement that they make is a uh, is not like uh, artificial ingredients and stuff like that. Clean Machine actually makes a, uh, they have this new, it's, it's really new to the market. A lot of people don't know about it, but it's a new superfood called lentine. And lentine is a water lentil that grows off lakes that ducks eat. And it's, it's, it's literally duck weed. You know, ducks eat this stuff. And there's tons of, tons of micronutrients and tons of protein in it. So we're the first one to market to come out with this protein where you're pretty much eating the protein by its whole, whole by like the complete food because this protein is not isolated. So pretty, and most isolated proteins like GNC and things like that, you know, all you're getting is the protein and any, and all the synthetic ingredients that mm. come with it to boost up the performance of the protein. This one is real food. So there's no added ingredients. There's no um, artificial, artificial chemicals. flavors, no fills, no chemicals, nothing like that. You're you're just drinking the whole food itself. And what was the name you know? of that again? And we do that. This is it's called Clean Green Protein, and you can get it on cleanmachineonline.com slash shop. Good. And if you want to use my code, just yes. type in KSTCM, and you get 25% off. Say that code one more time. KSTCM. KSTCM. So Kilo Tango. KST. Yeah, KST. So it's uh, Kilo Sierra Tango Charlie Michael. 
So just type that in and you'll get 25% off. Yes. Cool. That's what we're about. Man, I want to promote you. I want to put some money in your pocket. You know, I want our listeners. Look, there's all kinds of people you can always contribute to. Hell, you can contribute to the Bill and Hillary Clinton Haiti Fund. But we know where that all goes to. Now, here's a real man here. Show him some love. Put some money in his pocket so he can continue to do the great work right. he does. Right. 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 Yeah. <clears throat> now, I got, I want to know, like, uh, what's some of the BS behind the scenes of this whole bodybuilding, you know, industry? Uh, what's some of the hurdles you had to overcome? Because I'm, I'm pretty sure it probably was a bunch of BS you had to go through to get to where you, where you at. I mean, not really. I mean, there, there's no BS in the bodybuilding industry. I mean, with I always say, just mean train hard, be good, and and be consistent. You know. So with me, I, I always tell everyone who's interested in competing, you know, you just have to first of all find a good coach. Yes. You know. So that's what I did. I mean, I coach clients myself, but you know, I even have I myself have a coach. You know, and I've been with this coach since I started. So and his name's Dave Bogan, but uh, with with me, I would say that's find a good coach because when people go into the bodybuilding circuit, uh, you want you need someone with the experience to actually show you the ropes. You know, they can show you like how to get through get through the the BS. Like because some people might say it's a little political and stuff like that, but I mean, if you have a good coach, I mean, they can uh, definitely help you out get through all that mess and help you be able to achieve your goals the best way possible. Now, so I, I really don't think there's any, any BS, though. I want to ask you something about, you know, the vegan lifestyle. Once you decided mm -hmm. to become vegan, did you start having a fundamental change in the way you look or, or envision animals in this world? Yeah, so, I mean, when, when I wasn't vegan, uh, I used, the heaviest I ever weighted, was 220 pounds and I was holding about 18% body fat. Mm. And when it came to like performance and strength and stuff like that, I mean, it's pretty good. But if I compare it to being on a vegan lifestyle, uh, it's night and day different because with me, what happened was I first went pescatarian, right? So once I heard that speech, I went pescatarian first. So pescatarian means that you're only consuming fish. Uh, you're not eating anything that's from the land. So no animal products, byproducts. Gotcha. Uh, everything else was plant-based, you know. And from there, just doing that transition, within a couple months, uh, I went from 220 all the way to like 185, I believe. Holy and shit. I was already at 10% body fat, you know, or 12, somewhere around there, like 12, 10%. So uh, then after that, once I saw that, and I wasn't even trying, like I wasn't a trainer at that time. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't even, I just changed my major from that time. So I wasn't that proficient in nutrition thing. I just changed up the food. Just, I was like pretty much like the average Joe yeah. when it comes to nutrition, like one thing, you know, and I just had a little bit of military knowledge too, but fitness, but it's not that great. And I dropped weight like that and then once I saw that then I definitely knew going uh, vegan was definitely the right way because the only thing I had to do is drop fish and I was already eating vegan products already I wasn't just doing uh, tons of fish all the time I was also supplementing with a lot of uh, vegan products at that time and during when I went vegan during that time there wasn't a lot of uh, mock meats that they have now you know right. it was only like tofu Maybe maybe some safe can products like to thirteen things, but I wasn't like a big fan of that at the time because they were really expensive at that time. Mm -hmm. But uh, mostly a lot of tofu and and beans and things like that. And once I went completely vegan, then I dropped more weight, and then I'm able to hold my body fat around you know eight eight to ten percent without trying, you know, and. Since then, I've been, that's when I started doing bodybuilding, and then I just gained more mass since, since that that period. So I see a huge increase in strength, huge increase in recovery. Uh, when it comes to my libido, that's a huge increase as well. Well, it's you not know, very accurate. I just feel great. You know, can you yeah. talk about a little bit 
about these industrial farms and their pollution activity? Animal agriculture? Yes. Um, with, when it comes to the animal agriculture, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty much like a, a genocide, but it's hard to really show that to regular people because uh, a lot of individuals don't see animals as as a life form. Right. You know, like we know they're alive, but we don't think they're conscious beings, you know. And the only reason we don't see that is because we're we're conditioned, you know, by the animal as culture uh, to see that animals are nothing but a, a commodity, right. you know. So, and, and this is very true because if you look at commercials, if you look at magazines, if you look at billboards, if you look at the tr- a dairy truck, you know, what do you see a, a picture of when you see them representing a food product? They're always like a cartoon character. Has anyone noticed that? You know, yeah. it's, it's always a cartoon character with a joke or a slogan by it, but you never see the real picture of the animal, you know, and you'll never see how those animals get prepared. So one of my things that I always say is, you know, if the slaughterhouse had glass windows, 99% of the world would be vegan. Yes. You know, because if we saw how these animals get prepared, if we saw how the techniques that they use on these animals, you know, and if, if you're the one that say that you're an animal lover, I swear you wouldn't never let your dog or cat go through that type of process like these animals go through. So it's something that the animal agriculture is definitely high. Yes. You know, and they show this for as as a huge marketing um, tactic to make a lot of money off the off the people. You know. Well, it's a it's a lot of laws on the books right now that prevents uh, people because back in the day people used to go in and, and film these slaughterhouses and stuff. Oh, yeah. And now they got laws on the books yeah. that'll throw you in prison for a long time for, for pulling a stunt like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's called Gag Act. So the Gag Act, well, you can't you can't uh you can't do that because then you'll go to jail if you film or do any type of thing inside the farm where it makes makes them look bad. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. So yeah, so this is called a gag act. Yeah. This is, this is very true. Mm-hmm. And when we're doing this There's a lot to, to keep people that. in their place, you know, you're only armed with a camera. There's a guy down in Texas. Uh, it's called News Now Patrick, all right? This guy goes to, like, uh, police stations and films them. You know, anything in line of sight on the First Amendment is protected under the law. But what he's talking about, let's say that we're outside Tyson Foods, folks. And let's be honest. You know where most of the cocaine coming in to America is? It's through Tyson's food. They send the chickens down to Mexico with the gizzards and all that shit in the little wax bag. And then when they comes back, the wax bag's not there, but a little package of Coke's in there. That's what's going on. So mm. you keep on eating your fried chicken. Wow. You keep on eating your baked chicken. You keep on supporting Tyson Foods. And you know what? When your sons and daughters ends up in these private prisons... You only have to thank yourself when you look in the mirror. I'm sorry for my rant, guys. And another, and another thing about uh, central on the topic of drugs and animals. Um, one thing to add is that there's a lot of animals that already has drugs inside of them. And yes. Consume it without even mm-hmm. thinking about it. Antibiotics. Uh, you know? And not only so, that, like, I want to be honest. So Let's talk about the stress. It. These animals. You know, you you are what you eat. If this animal's co- cooped up in the literally a chicken coop, stressed out, oh my god, when they're gonna kill me? When, ah, and you kill and you consume that blood and flesh. That's what you're eating when you're eating that hamburger. When you're eating that chicken's fillet, you're eating blood and flesh with a lot of stress and antibiotics already in the product. Just think about that, folks. Yeah, I mean you're yeah, you're eating all the all the all the cortisol levels from the hormones. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're eating a lot of the antibiotics. So if you, and especially when it comes to antibiotics, you know, we uh, we all know that when we take antibiotics, we shouldn't be taking antibiotics, antibiotics right. on a normal basis just for like a simple flu or, or a cold or something like that because 
what they do is they're antibodies. So it actually kills everything in sight, even our own immune system. Yep. So if Lupus. we're consuming food that has already, because these animals have to take antibiotics because they're in such harsh conditions. You know, they're not in a, a green picket fence with the right. red barn and stuff like that because uh, there's there's one thing you can do to prove that. If you type in uh, animal farm and on Google, you'll see that, you know. But if you're typing CAFO, right, if you type in C-A-F-O, you'll see the real deal of how animals are being held in, you know. And it's really crazy when you when you type that in and you see that. Yeah. Because um, CAFO means... It means, uh, hold on, I'm trying to think, concentrated animal feeding operation, mm. you know? So that's mm. the real term. So it means when you talk about, like, you know, the gag act and things like that, I mean, even when you type in Google, you have to put in the, this actual term just to see what really goes behind the scenes mm. in the farms. But with that said, with the, anim- with the antibody, you know, when those animals are taking... Uh, those medications remember you are what you eat so yes. once that chicken or that animal comes onto your plate and think about it, now they're when you cook that meat high temperatures right it's hitting that flesh and that flesh is filled with uh medicine the medicine even becomes more toxic mm. you know because now it's going to hit with heat you know so those water molecules and we're eating that every single day what what so it's something to really think about what well, has that effect? You know how when you, you get drunker faster and more when you're drinking alcohol in a hot tub than you do when you're not. Look. That's the effect it has when you cook that meat. But more importantly, yeah, Corey, what foods can people eat? People who who really realize, you know what, I was raised a certain way. It might have been right, it might have been wrong. But you know what? I want the health benefits of being a vegan. What type of foods can you, you know, for a new, you know, a new to all this, something that can this baby step them into the lifestyle? What foods can you recommend? Well, I would say go go back to the basics. You know, go back to the basics of of what what we are supposed to eat. So when you go walk into the grocery store, for example, and this is why I teach to all my clients. You know, when I take them grocery shopping, I tell them. The grocery store is set up a way, all grocery stores are set up a certain way for a purpose. It's not set up for your leisure. It's set up for a purpose. It's all a marketing thing. And when you walk in, if you notice, all the healthy foods will be on the outside of the grocery store. All the refined and processed foods will be in the aisles. Mm. So first thing you want to do is walk on the outside, right? And right. go straight to the produce aisle. Right there, everything that grows from a limb or from the ground, pick that up. You know, start with your fruits. Start with your vegetables. You know, start with those fruits first. Start with nuts. Start with seeds. You know, all these fruits and vegetables, the produce aisle has tons of micronutrients that help support the body. You know, you, you want to get your omega-3, 6, and 9, get, start off with hemp seeds, you know. Start off with your almonds, your cashews, you know, things, your nuts and seeds. You know, you want to get the healthy carbohydrates. This is when we probably have to go into the into the, uh, the refined and processed style, but you want to go where all the rice and the beans are. Okay. You know, rice and beans. Go there. Okay. Red, yeah, rice and get beans your brown rice, the get your black beans. You know, these are where you're going to get your high fiber foods. You're going to get all your complex carbohydrates. And you want to get brown rice. You know, you don't want to get white rice because white rice is uh, bleach. Yes. And when when you receive white rice, it, it loses uh, the fiber. And you want food with a high fiber, you know, because the fiber actually slows down the process and, of the digestion and also helps the body push more of the, you know, the waste out of our body as well. Yes. You know. So we should be stooling like at least two, three times a day, maybe more. You know, if you're only doing it once or not at all, you know, you're Sounds really wrong. messed up and it's really unhealthy. Yes. You know? and, and it's true. And also um, the frozen aisle. The frozen aisle is also a great place to go to because all the fruits and vegetables, let's say 
you tell me, hey, Corinne, like, I like organic foods, but they die too fast. You know what I'm saying? That's not a problem. We could go to the frozen aisle, all your fruits and vegetables, pick those up because tell, tell you the truth, the frozen fruits, like the frozen vegetables and fruits are actually have higher nutrient value than the one in the produce aisle because when you get the produce foods, they have to go into the truck. And while it's in the truck, it's already kind of aging. Yes. You know what I'm saying? The food is aging because the food is alive. This is living food. So it's aging. Once you pull it off the vine, then that aging process starts to begin. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So all this food is living. So once it hits the truck, it kind of hits the store. These are a couple of days, maybe weeks, that the, the, uh, the food has been traveling around and aging. The frozen food is splash frozen. So once it's pulled off the vine, it's frozen right there on the spot. And then you put it in the bag. Once it's frozen, then it holds all its nutritional value okay. intact. So you can you can always get you can always uh, go into the frozen aisle as well and pick up food, fruits and vegetables from there as well as too. You know. You know. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. These industrial farms. I want to go into detail, Kern. I want to go into detail. I want. Okay. I want to talk about how they're polluting our water. How how is a detriment for everybody downstream with your well water and your actually um, uh, above ground water sources, creeks and rivers. So when it comes to the water, there's certain parts of the there's certain parts of the United States that you know, especially uh, the, the states that has farms, right? Right. They what they do is uh, when they do the animal agriculture and, and the reason they pollute the water and the rivers and things like that is because when there's like a storm, right? And a lot, a lot, of, some of these farms, I won't say a lot, but some of these farms don't really, they don't really use a, a true safety code. They don't stand, they don't stand to their true safety codes. Right. For example, they, when it comes to the latrines, I think it's called a, a latrine or a, a, a retention it? pond. It's, it's a retention called? pond. That's where all the feces and all that plus being a retention pond. That's cool, right? Yeah. But that, that, yeah, that, cool. that, that, so, that stuff leaks. Yeah, so for example, like the cesspools, right? Now, there's one there's one story I can tell you, and it happened in 1999, right, at Cape Fear. And what pretty much happened was a storm came through, and it destroyed all the farmlands, right? And what happens is all this waste pretty much spread it everywhere, mm. you know, mm. everywhere. And what ends up is that the waste is toxic, you know, and when it goes into the ground and leaves that dust pool, it, it pollutes everything. It pollutes yes. the soil, it contaminates the soil, it contaminates the, the, the water, it contaminates everything, you know. So then it's really hard to even produce crops because if they produce crops on this contaminated soil what ends up happening is that that's when you have like e coli yes you know you'll see e coli and broccoli you see e coli and tomatoes yeah broccoli and tomatoes don't shit folks broccolis and tomatoes do not defecate they don't yeah yeah so so when you have an e coli virus you know because i know like we still have them even to this day that you'll see like you know, burgers or something with E. coli. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, is that if if you, if you see something like meat or vegetables with an E. coli infection, and they're you doing a recall, that's because the soil was contaminated. Yes. And they, and, and and E. coli comes from poop, man. Yes. You know, it comes from shit. So, yes. So it's like broccoli, if, especially if it's just like fruits and vegetables, like fruits, like you said, fruits and vegetables don't shit. They don't. Know? So think about it, you know, like, do you want to get your food from from farm animals that's living in very bad conditions? No, no. You know, this is this is something that you want you want to really look at when it comes to food because a lot of people get sick. Even the workers get sick from time yep. to time. Yeah, you know, they're not treated right either. It's all exploitation is what we're talking about, folks. Let's just be simple. It's exploitation. We're exploiting the land, mm-hmm. you know, and what Kern didn't say is that sometimes they take this 
this this crap and manure uh, 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 like soup or gumbo and put it on planes and spray that in the air. In the air, friends. That means you're downwind of this. Yeah, you're breathing the soup. Yeah, they fill up too fast, you know, because they're supposed to be monitoring these stuff schools. And if they fill up too fast, then they'll put it in a crop chop and, and just spray their crops yes. with it. And See? then and that's not good because now you're spraying fecal matter in the air. Mm-hmm. So any any neighbors that live in that area is yes. inhaling that as well. I mean I'm and sorry folks. You know, me and Kerm was talking about this in a private conversation, but I had to bring it up to you guys because, you know, I only thought that that went down in Mexico, you know, mm-hmm. down there. You know, but when Kerm brought it to my attention, it, it, it's happening here in America, guys. The same disgust- America. The same disgusting tactics that they used in, in what they would call third world countries yes. back in the day, they doing this stuff in our country now. Oh, that's not my video. Anyhow. Yeah, I got the back up here on the laptop, yeah, you good. but you know. Finish going, saying what you were saying. Listen, man. what Kern, what the show's talking about tonight, affects us all, mm-hmm. all right? You know, we got the same John Burst Society members. We got the same Golden Saints who are basically devastating the land to where our babies and then our grandbabies yep. won't be able to live on this, mm-hmm. yep. all right? And not only that, listen, we have to start looking at animals as beings, we have to treat them with respect and kindness. We really do. Because of the fact that if we ever want to get off this mud ball called Earth, we have to be able to be compassionate to non-human beings. And we can't get that right, then damn it, we deserve to be on this mud ball. And when that sun blows up, fry us all. Because we ain't worth a damn anyway. Well, that's probably what's going to happen. No. So, no. But I like to add, I, I like to add to you, uh, before, before, because I know for a fact that I mean, especially especially to most most of your listeners, because I know most of your listeners aren't plant based. But the thing is, is that before you respect the animals, you need to respect yourself. Right? Yes, you know, always yes. say that first. You know, because you know we have an epidemic problem, of, like a, when it comes to obesity and diabetes and things like that, especially mm-hmm. here in America, a huge problem. Eighty percent of Americans are either obese or overweight, Yeah, you know? And if that's the case, you know, that shows that we have a huge health problem, you know, a very large health problem. And truthfully, a lot of the health issues will be resolved depending on what you put inside your mouth. Yes, sir. You know, mm-hmm. so if you want to respect yourself and respect your life, you know, that, that's what I always tell everyone. Respect yourself, respect your life, Take care of yourself, you know? If you see that the food that you're eating now isn't giving you any justice and you have that pot belly, you're looking down right now and you have that pot belly, you know, then you're not doing yourself any justice. The food that you were told as a kid is not healthy. It's not working. Right, you know, beef, right. chicken, fish, all these things, they're not working for you. You know, so why not change? You know, why not try something that you can't get fat. Like, you can't get fat eating fruits and vegetables. I'm sorry. You know, you just can't. Mm. You know, there's no saturated fat. There's no cholesterol. The, hold on. You I want to make sure everyone heard that. Cholesterol. You cannot yeah, get fat eating fruit and vegetables. You cannot get fat eating fruit no. and vegetables. I want to make sure, because I know the audio thing's funny here, but I want to make sure everybody in the whole yeah. wide fucking world <laughs> hears this. You cannot get fat eating fruits and vegetables. Well, Period. you fry them. Well, then you're putting in the animal fats and your yeah. stupid ass deserves to get cholesterol and die. Well, you're going well, you to get a few people who are like, well, I can't eat. You're going to get a few people who say, I can't eat fruit. You know what? That's bad you know what? That's when right, Darwinism you know? kicks in. La- natural selection, motherfuckers. We're sitting here telling you straight up. You know, put that bologna down. Put that fucking pork chop. Throw that shit in the fucking trash. You know what I'm saying? But you eat some real food and nourish your fucking body, you fucking fools. But you bring that up though, and the majority of people, it, it's it's. I can I can't help it. I'll eat everything on the goddamn plate. I, 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 I want you, man. Look, I, dude, I grew up, in but, this. but it's a I'm lot. You, this it's is a, the way to go. I understand that, but it's 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 a uh, it'll be a huge task to break people. I mean, you can't. Twenty eight days. Twenty eight days. You can break any habit. Where it's opium or eating meat. 
28 days of going without that, let me go, you will break it. Let me go start but the grill it, it, it up. it takes hard. Let me go start no, the grill up. I'll be the first, there, I'll be the first one there with a come yeah. on. I, 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 and get that. Yeah. Listen, folks. Listen. I'm, 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 I'm totally honest. I do eat meat. All right? I, I'm a carnivore. I was raised that way. But after talking to Karn and others, dude, I see where they're coming from, and I want to get there, man. I, I really do. We all were of the problem. Yeah. Like we man, all I don't want to die of diabetes. You know? I don't want to have a stroke. I don't want to die of these fucking meat, blood, and flesh diseases, dude. I want to have my body alkaline. I don't want to have food with acid. Drinking Coca-Cola, which, by the way, supports rodeos, which, by the way, are animal abusers. All right? It, so, you know, my whole point is this here. You know, I, and I'm so thankful for Kern not being a snob because he's doing the right thing. He's eating correctly. You know, I and that's why we got him on the people. show so he can educate us. Yes, sir. You know, yes, I sir. don't know nothing about, you know, that's why I asked him, what stuff can I do to get more protein if I'm not eating meat? But I got it even better. Can you explain, and a lot of people might not know, uh, clinically, when you go, when they consider you overweight or obese, I guess it's. <clears throat> It, it goes by your height, weight. Can you explain that so the audience can get a better understanding of what they consider, what is medically considered obese? So obese is when your body fat percentage is like, but it goes because it goes by your weight and your height and age as well. You know, so for example, because I have a chart right here actually. So like for example, like for for the average woman, right? I'm mm -hmm. just going to say like between 36 and 40, right? So for, for a woman, it'd be ideal, right? And this is kind of like straight board across. The numbers change very slightly, but I'm taking the average number, okay? So you want to be around 25% body fat to be healthy, okay? So if you're like, even if you're younger than that or older than that, you know, you want to be like somewhere around the 21s, maybe maximum 25. Okay. And the same thing with the men. If you're a man, men put a whole lot less body fat. So I would say somewhere around 8%, all the way up to maximum to 24%. And that all depends on your age as well. So, you know, if you're 50, if you're 56 and older, you're allowed to hold a lot more body fat. Right. If you're around like 30, you know, 30s and 40s, probably want to be around 18%. Mm. So I mean, even at 18, so for a man, you know, a man being at 18%, that's like you could say that per, that individual has very soft abs, you know, mm. soft, like you could still, you could see, you lift up your shirt, you can see some lines, they're not ripped and stuff like that. <laughs> like, man, but, you know, they're, they're soft. You know, Kern, now we're going to body shaming out. territory. Now we're starting body shaming. <laughs> Talking about motherfucker, no boy. No, we try to do a drink a little beer on a Friday. <laughs> yeah. But he's breaking it down for reality. You look at that mirror. That mirror don't fucking lie, no. and that's why it tells did. you the truth. And that's why we got him on the show. Yes, sir. Yeah, it makes perfect sense and, to be. And a I'm, not, I'm not the one to body shame. I just tell you straight up. You know, it's just like. You know, it's, it's, it's a fact. If you're overweight, if, if you have a pot belly and stuff like that, and, you know, and you're tired when you wake up in the morning, have low energy, all these things, you know, that's, that's signs of obesity. And mm. it's not healthy. There's nothing there's nothing to be proud of, you know, of that. You right. know, because it, it just shows that you want to have a lot of health issues in the yeah. future. That's all it shows. When I see that, that's all I see. Yeah, yeah you know what that I'm made me think of? When we My talk job about is to make sure you're living a healthy lifestyle, you know. So if you want to live healthy, if you want to add years to your life, you know, you want more energy, you want to, you know, want to live more positive, you know, definitely uh, change change your lifestyle, and this this can happen, you know. You know, I, I saw on your Facebook, Facebook page, Carl. Yeah. There's a lady. I forget her name right offhand, but she's an older gal, and you can see where she had. She's on your actual Facebook page there. You can see where she uh, 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 used, you know, like a bodybuilding and technique, and she changed her body. Literally right. changed her body. She showed a picture from like, yeah, one, yeah, one of my clients, Amy Shishuit. I think so. Yes, sir. I believe so. Uh, yeah. With a, a photo yeah. from the back, the back view there, 
uh, showing the biceps, triceps, shoulders, and all that. Yeah, she she's um she's like Caucasian with blonde hair. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, yeah, older her. gal, yep. and she put herself together, dude. You know, this ain't just for the young mm -hmm. folks. But yeah. you know, this the show ain't geared to older people. And, you know, the few of y'all that's listening, you can benefit greatly by what Karn is talking about. Changing our body. And not only that, let's look at... Oh, She's 44 years old. How old? 44. Yeah. Yeah, she's... A, yeah. And, and it looks fantastic. And what I notice is a lot of the older women nowadays, they look better than some of these younger gals. Mm -hmm. you know, but that's what Curtis talking about. These right. younger girls sitting there at McDonald's and Burger King, <laughs> I take a shake and do a whopper and, and then look like dog shit. But you know, I don't mean, I, don't, I, I shouldn't have said it like that. Listen, okay, we, we have all been a victim well, of high you, fructose corn syrup yeah. and all these GMO They products. complain about the muffin top is what I heard. They call this, it. Ain't no, this is a straight up mushroom, dude. There ain't no muffin to it. This is like 18, 20 inches over the belt line, yeah. dude. Wow. This grimace. Dur, yeah, dur. that's grimace. That <laughs> you know, uh, uh, and, hold on, folks. I don't mean to be ignorant or hardcore, but listen, I want to stress this point. You are what you eat. Not only do we it. help ourselves when we become vegan, we help the animals. Because then a few of these farms would go out of business. Ain't nobody buying this meat, and they wouldn't fuck with it. Well, agriculture is almost one-third percent cause of the world's pollution. It's just animal agriculture alone. But, but if that being going said, to, yeah. ain't nobody going to yeah. maybe y'all with the, the banking around the end. Listen, guys. If we we are what we eat, plain and simple. If you're sitting there eating an animal that's like scared, you know, they see their people die and they're getting injected and all that fear and bullshit is going into you. And then when you sit there and they're like, oh, I'm just so scared. I didn't take a fucking Prozac pill. It all is a big circle. All right. The pharmaceuticals know that these fucked up meats will make you have anxiety. And this anxiety can only be fucking uh, relieved with this pill. All right? So it's a huge fucking circle. Well, like, Break the chain, people. Break the fucking chain. Well, like, and let's be civilized. Well, like Corin said, when you, and what I know, when you take antibiotics, which you're eating antibiotics if you eat meat, that the more antibiotics you, you, you consume... Right. When you do get sick, you need more antibiotics, stronger antibiotics. Once again, it, that's actually it, it right breaks, to the, your, uh, into the, the pharmaceuticals. pharmaceuticals. Right. They get more money yep. from you. And then not to mention when you get cancers and things of like that. Like, let's, for instance, you know, a lot of our Amish brothers and sisters, they do not vaccinate their children. Yet their children don't have smallpox. Their children don't have polio or autism. So what's going on here? Not only they're juicing up that little animal, that pig and the chicken and the cow, but that same scientist that makes that bullshit will turn the needle on you, you and me and our seed. All right? Yeah, it's about and they're problems. dosing them up with fucking mercury. They're dosing them up with all these other, the weakened strand of the flu from last year. They don't have shit with the mutated flu, the flu from this year. And they're dosing our kids up with that. And we sit here blindly. Oh, I'm just going to eat my Whopper and throw my little wrapper out the window while my kids are going nuts in the back. And you don't want to ask why? You don't ask why. Because they dumbed down, that's why. Exactly. And that's why we had the other morning show, folks. Yep. P.O. Box 133, DeSoto, Missouri, 63020. Send in your donations and continue to help support our work and what we do. So, uh, corn. Uh, if somebody's looking to get into uh, the bodybuilding profession, I know I'm not. I'm too skinny. <laughs> but, Stop. Uh, but what advice do you have? Somebody looking to just, or even just to, you know, build a muscle mass, or you know, to just uh, make their body look a little right. bit better. I mean, I mean, the only advice really I have is is just the coaching, and and the only reason I say that is just because. I mean, when it's, it's like this, when it comes to bodybuilding, you're an athlete, right? Mm -hmm. So every athlete in the world has a coach. Yeah. What athlete do you know that doesn't have a coach? Not one, not one. See? Not one. Right. So if you want to go into the sport of bodybuilding, definitely get a coach because you want to actually 
uh, do the right stuff. The Are there process. any websites you know, or anything it's, it's, that it's can better, guide you to the right coach? It's better to do I, I was just well, asking, are there any websites or anything that can add, you know, that can oh, guide yeah, you yeah, to yeah, the right yeah. coach? Yeah, so so like myself, I'm, I'm a coach, you know, like myself. And you can go to bodyhqfitness.com. You know, I have a 12-week transformation program on there where I write up meal plans, workout plans. Everything's all customized and personalized to your goals, regardless if it's bodybuilding, fat loss, or just if you want to gain muscle and be lean. You know, I have the... Um, those programs available, or you can just hit me up on Instagram, which is Astra and Sutton. And if you want to look at any more, uh, like I do have tips, you know, when it comes to health, nutrition, and fitness, you can always go to my YouTube channel, which is called Vegan Live Fit. Vegan Live Fit. There you go, folks. You know, if you want to live a healthier lifestyle, you know, go check the man's stuff out if you think you can do it. And I know it's hard to transition from not eat meat, you know, because it ain't nothing like a good barbecue. I, I, I understand. It's, it's, you know. Now, Kurt, we're going to go to the weirder side of the show. What is your opinion, or do you have an opinion, about extraterrestrial life outside of the Earth biosphere? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, when it comes to, like, aliens and stuff like that, I mean, I'm not, I don't think it's, like, aliens, like what we see on TV, like, monsters and stuff like that. But I think that when it comes to life itself, life can be down to a bacteria. Yeah. You know, so there could be different bacteria. It's not even just here on Earth, but that we probably don't even know about, but even just within our own app, in our own solar system, you know. So so there's a lot of things that really come down to uh, when it comes to life. For me, it's a more specific when it comes to alien life and things like that because there could be other species there could be even forms of bacteria that's living on different types of planets that we don't know about you know so yeah it's, it's definitely possible i mean i don't i definitely don't believe that we're the only beings on the planet at all no and do you think that you know the way we think now imagine this i want to set this up for you just a little bit a guy a human being with the mindset of President Donald Trump owning, you know, having command of a space armada, going out into the universe, projecting, you know, what they project, do you think that would be a good thing? You know, because, I mean, I think, I think we have to learn a lot of just peace and compassion in ourselves. I mean, we yes. have a lot of problems that's going on now. You know, and I mean, we came and, like, we don't even see other animals. Like for me, I I look at the world like we don't even see other animals as a living being. As yes. A being. Yes. You know, so if we can't even see that, how, how can we even react to any different species? Because we can't even react normally to the species we have on Earth. Right. Yeah. So I can only imagine when if we meet another species here uh, from a different planet, you know, we want to be freaked out. So I don't even think we're ready. For none of that, you know, mm. until we fix our own problems and issues first, you know. And that's the reality, folks. That's yeah. reality. You know, I, I'm tired of being trapped on this prison planet called Earth or Gaia or whatever you want to call it. You know, it's time for us to show the universe that we do have, you know, compassion, empathy, understanding, and we can be leadership and teachers to less fortunate races that are not a part of the human race than us. But right now, as it sits, all I see we is are take the, us to your leader and we're going to enslave We are you. the less fortunate. Unfortunately, we're yeah. the ghetto of the fucking universe right yeah, now. Yeah, we are. You can, you break down on planet Earth, your spaceship will be on blocks, you'll be dissected in some lab, mm -hmm. and that's that. You yeah. know, and because of South Park, the other the other part of the di you know the uh, the diagram here is if you're a human being, you're going to be sucked up to a spaceship, anal probe, and then released. You know, <laughs> nobody wants all that. You know, seriously, <laughs> nobody wants all that. And, and and what I want, what I would like to see, you know, and, and, and Kurt. He didn't I, tell I, you about this segment, did he? <laughs> Kurt, I suggest, you know, I ask that you, if you have spare time, I know you're on YouTube, check out Shark, you know, H or S H A R K, Shark. That's the name of the YouTube channel. Uh, his name is Steve Hendy. 
and check out some of the work he's doing with pigeon shoots, shutting down corrupt politicians and corrupt police officers. Because what you're talking about really is hand in hand with what Steve Henry's talking yep. about with Shark. We have to fundamentally change the way we as human beings view other beings. And what I mean by other beings is from yeah. the, the lowliest ant to the mightiest eagle. All of those beings, you know. Yeah. And it's hard for me to say this because, dude, you know, I am a carnivore. I was raised, Kern, that you don't become big and strong unless you eat that, that beef and you eat those potatoes and you eat those green beans and that piece of bread, you know, and drink the milk. But, dude, you know, when you think about it, Listen, the, 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 the people said the, the, uh, when uh, Moses came out of Egypt, right? You're going to go to the land of milk and honey. Talking about uh, 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 Israel, right? Well, milk and honey in nature is a lackative, dog. You're going right. to the land of eating and shitting. You don't want to be there. Turds <laughs> everywhere and all that crap. You don't want that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And, and I want to say this. And, and me and Kurt talk about Listen. If he, didn't, to, he didn't tell you about this segment, <laughs> did he? No, this is for the people now. <laughs> Listen, let's look back at in, in, in human civilization. All right, go all the way back. The societies that were hunters and gatherers were what we would consider barbarians. Right. The societies that stopped, okay, we're going to plow this lane and plant a few things. That was civilization. All right. You're either going to be a meat eating barbarian or a civilized vegan. You cannot be a civilized barbarian. You can't. You know, Hitler tried it, and look what happened. All right? We don't need another rehab of that. Right. We got to fundamentally change the way we look at animals, because then we will fundamentally change the way we look at other human beings. And that's the what. That's the truth. And I'll, and I'll, I like to add, too, it's like, you know, you don't, no one has to go, like, uh, you know, like, extreme like no one has to go zero to a hundred right off the bat you know right. it's all about just learning taking your time and transition you know like i said i went pescatarian first and the whole reason i transitioned is so i can learn more about the vegan lifestyle because just like everyone else that's listening you know you're like yo i want to make sure that i'm getting the right proteins i'm getting yes. the right foods into my diet because i don't want to get sick you know or sicker you yes. know right so or be malnourished. So take your time. You know, you can start off with something simple as, you know, meatless Mondays, you know, like one day out of the week. Yes. You know, go out shopping, buy vegan food, and have that whole day for vegan stuff, you know? And then and then learn that way. Or you could do what I did, just change up your diet, you know, go pescatarian or go vegetarian. You know, or just if you like eating meat, because I, I even train um, clients who consume meat. And what I do is, uh, if they if they don't want to go uh, on that type of road on, on a vegan and vegetarian lifestyle, uh, I, what I do is I tell them they have to take out beef, dairy, shellfish, and pork. Mm. You know, so I take those items out, and then all those items I replace it with vegan and vegetarian products. So they could still eat chicken, uh, high quality fish like uh, tuna, salmon, and also egg whites. Then I add everything else to a vegan and vegetarian option, so they can. So, like, let's say for your milk, I put, I replace it with uh, almond milk or cashew milk, you know. And there's like tons of milk made out of everything now. You know, they have rice milk and mm. coconut milk, like almost everything. They have a whole bunch of stuff. And then when it comes to like, let's say, uh, my one of my clients tell me they like beef. You know, they're like, oh man, I'm a big red red meat yeah. lover. Like, I love my beef. I love my burgers. Yeah. You know, then I show them the alternative of the mock meats. Like, uh, there's companies like uh, Sweet Earth, Garden, Tofurky, uh, Field Roast. They make a lot of great mock meats, and all these mock meats are made out of wheat gluten and soy. But I'm telling you, they taste really good. And if I tell you, well, would you mind having like a burger a day or, you know, a burger or, a burger or two burgers out of that wheat? And you don't have to worry about getting a lot of saturated fat and high cholesterol when you still consume it. I mean, I know that guarantee is going to be like, yes, especially if you're going with fat line, you know. And then um, when it comes to like uh, like shellfish, you know, let's say you like crab. Gardein, again, they have mock meat that's made, that's uh, tastes like fish and, mm. and crab, you know. And they use seaweed to make the flavoring because remember, 
when, when it comes to the meat of the animal, truthfully, if you eat it by itself, it doesn't really have a particular taste. Right. You know, what we do is we use plant seasoning, like seasoning with seasoning is made out of plants. All seasoning is made out of plants. Right. We season it to make it taste better. So think about it. If you're already seasoning meat and animals with plants to make it be more digestible, so, how do you think what just pure plants is going to taste like if you just season more plants? Yeah. From, the, from what you're seasoning it with. You know, you get what I'm saying? It's like we're deceiving you know? our minds by tricking our minds. We're eating this flesh, you know, the blood and dead flesh. But we're put, sprinkling garlic, and we're sprinkling onions, or parsley, or thyme, or any of that shit. To trick the taste bud. Yes, to sir. The, to, to trick the taste bud. And that's the yeah. whole gag. That's been the whole gag. You know, that's why I'm saying, we live in a literal world of deception. Everything's the base. Everything's a lie. Santa Claus isn't real, kids. And neither is the Easter Bunny. And all this, the food pyramid that they told you, fish... Uh, dairy, uh, beef, bread, and a little uh, vegetables is a lie. It's a lie. Look at a beef cow. Look at any ca- the, the the wasabi cow, the Angus cow, the regular milkmaid cow. Those cows don't eat no meat, but they're big and strong. Why? Why? Because they're getting the energy from the sun through the plants instead of getting the energy from the sun through the plants, through the animals, and then to you. That's the bottom line. And you know, I'm the, I'm the guy that normally believes, you know, that our, our ancestors or our parents were right. You know, they, they try to treat us the best, teach us the best way they could with what they have, okay? Well, we have tools and we have knowledge. We have access to reports, white papers, uh, scientific reports that shows eating meat is really detrimental to our health, all right? And even the Jewish people, the true Hebrew Israelites, they eat grain until they have their feast days. Then they'll kill the sacramental animal, and and, and that's where it's really cultured, and, and, and then consume that. But it's not on a day-to-day basis. You forgot See? human growth hormones. That's why, them, that's why them cows big like that. Well, mm-hmm. well, that's true, too. But the bottom line is those cows wouldn't be big if we didn't have consumers of said product. I had a friend that I went to high school with. He I was doing work down in uh, Texas. Mm-hmm. And right across the street from where he was working at was the Tyson Chicken Farm. Mm. You mean the Tyson Drug Cartel? And they said the way that it smelled after that. It's like, oh, it, God, it, yeah. it, it doesn't even want you to, you don't even want to eat chicken. You and that's what me and Kurt was talking about on private. Look, if most people had to go behind this house, or not this house, their house, and actually kill a chicken. Or kill a pig, or kill a hog or lamb, and actually gut it and, and, and process it correctly, you would not have that many meat eaters. They're, they're, mm-hmm. Most people are sensitive. Yeah. You know, when you see that animal, like, I, I hate to say it, once again, when when I view some of uh, Steve Hendy's videos from Shark, and they had these things called pigeon shoots where they throw these live pigeons up in the air and people blast them with shotguns, and they leave them dead there in the field. They don't even pick them up. There's a image that is seared in my mind until the day I die of this pigeon sitting there on its side and you saw the little blood come out from underneath its feathers and its eyes are open and it's still conscious and they try to save this bird, but the bird died, all right? The same people that are in control of Tyson, the same people who are in control of Monsanto, the same people who are in control of even Goldman Sachs are the same people out there blasting these birds, all right? And tell them why they was black. Why we on this subject? Uh, tell them why they was uh, blasting the uh, pigeons for. What was the purpose of it? It was pigeons? a fundraiser. It was a fundraiser. It was, it was to make more money. Yep. And I guarantee you, there was real business deals going by. Hey, Dimebag, I'm just good to see you here at the meet. Uh, uh, hey, hey, will you sign this contract so I can get this road built over here in the county? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, that's what that shit's about. But, but that's bullshit. Have, that's not sustainable. May I have something? Yes, Go sir. ahead. Well, the thing is, is like with me personally, I don't, I don't blame like Tyson. I don't blame uh, none of these big corporations. You know, it's very easy to point a finger and yeah. and blame uh, a big company. You know, uh, the reality is that the only way they're getting funds is through the consumers. Yes, mm-hmm. you know, so the only people you can blame. Is ourselves. Because I would say when you point one finger, if you point your finger at someone, you got three pointing right back at you. Yes, sir. You know? 
selling. The only thing you can blame is ourselves. As the more we consume meat, the more you put money in their pocket. They yeah. can't make money if no one buys it. That's true. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'll be the first so one to admit that it, if, you, if, we, it's if we invest our money in more healthy food, then the healthy companies can rise up. Right. You know? So your your tax dollar, the dollars you earn every single day, is we vote every single day and we don't realize it. The the money we use and depending on what we buy, that's who we're voting for. Yes. That's who you're promoting. Yes. You know? And I agree with you. And you know, so that's really, why it's so really hard. Down for that. <laughs> and I'll be honest, brother, and right in front of the world and everybody. That's why it's so hard talking to you at times, you know, because I feel so guilty being a consumer of meat, being, you know, a per, you know, that's how I was raised, dude. I was raised, you know, to hunt off the land and, 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 but, you know, as I grow as a person and I meet, you know, people like you, Kern, that educate me and, and, and you challenge me to think, you know, and I'm trying. Mm -hmm. I truly am trying because I see the benefit in your lifestyle. You know, not to yeah. mention, ladies, if you go to this man's website, Facebook, um, Karen Sutton, you know, you see his physique and you see what meat gets you. You might want to look at your old man and be like, hey, put down that steak and pick up some broccoli. You know, I mean, it, it's, <laughs> it, it's good for everybody. <laughs> hey. We keep it 100. Hey, we do. And even the, though it is uncomfortable, you know, because once again, the other morning is. show is about truth. It's, a, it's, it's about it's, truth. Above all, all the bullshit. Yeah, right. It is about truth. And this man yeah. is here sharing, and he's not coming to us like a snob. Like, hey, brothers, you know, I'm bigger and buffer than all y'all. And, you know, and all this. No, he's coming to us like a man to man and saying, guys, look, if you want to be right, you got to eat right. right. You got to start thinking right. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about. That's what the shows have always been about. Right. Getting people to think right. Yeah, because I I'm not the one to criticize. Like, you know, I actually wrote a post this morning about, you know, vegans policing each other. Because me, even within a vegan community, there's vegans who's very, very radical. You know? Yeah. And they'll put other people down. And, yeah. and, and I understand the pain because the pain that they're coming from is they see, they saw the, the ugly truth, you know, and they, and when it comes to a life of another being, especially an innocent being, they, they just, they, they're so angered. Yeah. They don't know how to Articulate. express it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I, I understand that because like, you're talking to someone who's been through war. So I've seen bloodshed. Yes, know, sir. To other human beings. So, so the level of death is like, it's, it's already to the top. I, mean, I don't know what can get worse, you know? But for me, I understand that. And that's why I look at it like, hey, I've been there. I, mean, I can't criticize. You know, I've been on both sides of the field. I've been on, in the war situation. And I used to eat meat. Yeah. I used to think this way, too. So how can I sit? I can't put myself on a pedestal and think I'm better than anyone. You know, only thing I could do to help is educate. Because I know that education... It's paramount. As long as we teach each other, we, we, we teach each other and take time and patience because everyone is different. Yes, sir. You know, like for me, it took me a couple months. You know, for some people, it might take a couple years. You know, like for some people, it might take that one day and they switch. They make the switch immediately. But everyone comes from different roads, different stories, different backgrounds, yep. different cultures, different religions. And we don't. We need to really have a, a true uh, grasp and an understanding how hard food is in, in like has ties within like family, religion, because everything, everything when it comes to our life. Because you know, there's one thing that men and women always do that human beings do is communion. Yes, sir. You know, and you you'll see that everywhere. You know, it, it doesn't have to be a religious thing. We all do commune, you know, when we go home to eat with friends, with family, mm -hmm. and it brings us together. Food plays a huge role. So I get it, you know, talking about being something real radical, telling you to eat a lot of big fruits and vegetables might sound crazy, <laughs> but in the reality of things, you know, it is making you unhealthy. Yes. You know? So it's, 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 we can still have communion, but we have to just educate and recondition ourselves into a, a better lifestyle with healthy
healthier foods with that with living food. And I'll, yes. and there's one thing I always say is like, our thought, don't make your body a graveyard. You know, like my body is in a graveyard. I don't put dead carcasses in this body anymore. Mm. I put living food in my body, but because living food is going to give me more life. There you, you go. Know, dead food is going to bring me to death a lot faster. You know. That's why I love talking to this brother. See how he just breaks it down? Now, yeah. no fancy ass words. Anybody understands that. Dead flesh mm -hmm. and blood brings you closer to death. Living food brings you closer to life. And if you don't understand what this man is talking about, rewatch the video again and again until it sticks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. he's right on point. <laughs> he's right on point. You know what I'm saying? And not only that, he has a physique to prove it. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, well, nine bag, true power, you know, Cobra. Y'all don't know what's going on. Well, go to this man's Facebook. You see. That's and why we got him on the show. Of course. We don't know what's going on. That's why we got him on the show. You know? And you know what? I'm so glad. You know, seriously. You know, Brother Coran, he didn't have to, Coran didn't have to uh, uh, have this interview tonight. No. You know, he has better, and, and you know what I'm saying? He can do things on a Friday night. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's why this is so awesome, and I'm so thankful, Corn, that you decided to come on and share with us. You know what I'm saying, bro? And, and you, and this ain't the, the yeah, last time. You're coming back again and again and again and again until we get these people to think right. We got like an open policy on the show. Once yeah, you come on first, we just open the door for yes, you. Yes, sir. You just act the complete fool. So when you write your book, and, and before you get caught up in the, 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 the contracts with the big guys, Come to us and holler at your boys so we can put that information out yeah, and then go definitely. to the big guys. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. You know, yeah, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm, no. I'm always honored to, to share to share a good message, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and you know the way I like it about it, Court, that you don't share it in an arrogant-ass <laughs> way. You know what I'm saying? Just trust me, brother. You yeah. have the bills of goods to be like that if you want it to be. But you, you choose to take the higher road, man. And that's so beautiful because, right. you know, that little 18-year-old out there in Iowa or the little 21-year-old down there in Florida or, you know, even the 64-year-old out there in California that's listening sh to the show tonight that's getting something good from what this man's saying, right. what we're saying. That's what this is all about. And I'm so thankful for people like you, Corn, to actually come on the show and share with yeah. us. Because, you know what, brother, if you was on the, 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 the corporate media circuit, you would already have probably made like twenty, thirty thousand dollars for the time that you invested with us just talking because they they give you money by the minute. You know what I'm saying? And wow. yeah. you are valuable to me. True power is mine. Straight up, brother, you are valuable to me. And uh, well, I truly appreciate it. Uh, ain't no big, ain't no biggie. Uh, tell the people where they can find you if they want to get some some valuable information. You know. Things they can do to start changing, to try to start transitioning off of me, because I know it's a very difficult process. It is. It is. You know, uh, tell people where they can find you, if they want to reach out to you, anything you want to promote, go ahead and just lay it on us. So you can definitely find me on Facebook and Instagram. Just type in my name, Corinne Sutton, K O R I N S U T T O N. And then I also have my YouTube channel, Vegan with Bit. Just type that in, or you can type in my name, and you'll find me there. But uh, those are the best places to reach me. And there you go, folks. If you want to change the way you eat, and it's hard. And the way you feel, more importantly. Yes. You know, you're you tired of waking up all sluggish and felt like you ain't, you know. That's because why you went to sleep, especially if you ate a sandwich or some meat before you go to sleep. All that dead flesh and blood is sitting in your belly, just sitting there marinating. That's why you're so tired because your belly's sitting there. It's working all night long while your brain and other parts of your body is asleep. You have to be, have totality, folks. Not just a portion, but everything. All right. Well, you good? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I could honestly talk about this for three or four more hours because I am fired up. <laughs> about, I'm serious. I'm serious, man. You guys have had an effect on me. Seriously, he all won. And Steve have had the <laughs> fundamental yeah. fucking effect on this guy here, man. Like it, when Dimebag came over, right? I was outside my front porch there. There was a wasp that was caught in my screen. 
I took a cup and a piece of paper and and trapped a wasp. And when I walked outside, Nine Man pulled up and I unleashed the uh, paper there and the wasp flew away. I respect life now. I really have a fundamental difference of the way I view life. You know, you oh, that's just a wasp. You know, a red tail wasp at that. That really hurts when they stink. But you know what I was thinking? That is a, a life. That's a life form. It's doing its thing. Who am I to end it? Just because it's a nuisance to me. I'm not that person. It's a no true one. new powers mindset. You know, hey. sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And Corn, I guess you to have the influence on this man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I do talk to him off the show. That's good. Right. You know, it's not just the show here. You know, right. I, 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 I want to bring, you know, I mean, and I met this man because of a listener told me to reach out to this man. All right. And I want to thank you, listeners, straight up. Seriously, because uh, by reaching out to Koran Sutton, it has fundamentally changed my fucking life. The way I try to, not try, but actually look at things now. You know, we're in this together, guys. Me, you, the birds, the bees, the trees. Now, you know, back. you know, they go, they go hammer your oh, ass. Oh, yeah, I know. The next comments, they see they are. eating the sandwich. I know, <laughs> I know. Because I'm notorious for eating on the show, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? We're going to change this, and this show will evolve. This is a work in progress, and I'm so glad that we're all part of this. You know? uh, on behalf of the other morning show, Carl, we want to say thank you for coming on and uh, giving us some valuable information, and uh, we know time is very valuable. You do not get that back, so we just want to say thank you, and anytime you want to come on the show or anything, any information you need to get out there, you know, uh, director of personnel and, and <laughs> the man that does everything behind the scenes, uh, you know how to reach uh, True Power's Minds. And I just want to say thank you on behalf of the other morning show and Dimebag TV. Yes, yes sir. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, yeah, thank you for having me. I'm, I really appreciate it. That's what you did. You're an awesome, thank brother. You. And, you, and I want to add this, Corn. You're a credit to the human race, brother. You're a credit to the human family as a whole. Totality. Thank you. And keep on doing the work you're doing. So if y'all if you're out there listening, oh, well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. If you're a woman and you out there listening to stuff, it's Friday night, you ain't got nothing to do. Go check out the man's work. I'm pretty sure it'll get you through the rest of the evening. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, you know, so. <laughs> you know, like South Park said, this dude he here's a on? beefcake. Yeah, yeah, he's still on. Uh, He's a beefcake, totally red. Yeah. So we just want to say thank you, man. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Brother Corey. Thank you. Wow, thank you. All right, bye-bye. There you go, folks. Get your eat on. Get your eat right. You know, stop fucking with the shit. I know it's good. Now, listen, and, and listen, it's that we need to say, yeah, it's good, but it's good in a bad way. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's a lot of um, people, especially if you claim to be conscious. You know, if you're saying that you're a conscious person and you're not talking about vegan, you ain't shit. Seriously, straight up, you ain't shit. Because a part of the vegan... you got to understand this in the totality. I guess I never use the word conscious because I'm going to eat me some pork chops. Uh, but I you know what? I, I know it sucks. No, I understand. I understand, I understand where you're coming from. It tastes so yeah. good and it just breaks me down because <laughs> I can eat everything on a goddamn pig except this nasty ass pig. <laughs> <laughs> I understand where you're coming from, man. Because, you know, but we have to do better. We have to strive to understand where we're at in yeah. reality and try to st strive to be better. And, you know, do I say that, you know, vegans, because you're vegan, you're just perfect? No, 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 no. There's still more to it than that. You know what I'm saying? Right. We have to show humanity towards each other. Yeah, if you if you eat better, you're going to think better. Yes, you're gonna sir. You're going to feel better. Yes, you're going to treat each other better. Yes. And that's what it's all about. That's the reason why that, that food is what Brother Corin was talking about is very valuable. Yes. It's making me think about a lot of stuff. You, you know, know, and for those who haven't you saw know, him on his Facebook, you know, go to Facebook, you know. Check out Corns, K O R I N Sutton, S U T T O N. Check it out. You know, punch it in Google. Check it out. This brother is on the real deal. You know, he's like Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, right. and he is big as fuck, and he eats plant material. Right. All right, and he doesn't fuck around with the GNC. You heard the man. He answered the question. All right. right. You can get big, guys. Don't believe the hype we we were told. You can get big as strong as fuck. Right. Eating plants. Yeah. You really can't, and you won't suffer diabetes. 
You won't be fat and all that other good mm-hmm. shit. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, folks, I ain't got nothing else. Oh, I, I got one thing to say. Okay. Alex Jones, I know you're watching. I've uh, received an email from a certain individual. I want to tell you, you know. And you coming we, on here first. <laughs> we ain't going on there first. We kind of went hard on you in the past. But that's the only I love, brother. You need to reach out to us. You know, you can use that orange boy from St. Louis or whoever. Reach out to us. And we will come on your show, Jones. But you coming on here, too. Yeah, you coming on the other morning show. Because of the fact that, and I'm going to tell you straight up, I want you to answer JT Redding. I got a question. Why was you crying and sobbing over JT Redding? And if those of you who do not understand who JT Redding is, Google that shit. JT Redding. Alex Jones is busting over tears over this motherfucker. But yet, you want us to believe that you're for everybody. Hmm. Come on, man. Come right. on. You know what I'm saying? And also, uh, just a couple quick things. Research HSBC Bank. Also, research the movie that Wesley Snipes was going to make called Codename Zorro. It was about Martin Luther King. Wesley Mm. Snipes, once again, brother, please, if you're listening to me, uh, I reached out to Joe Judge Brown, uh, you know, even Mark Ranaheim. I'm trying to get to you, brother. You're very elusive. I want to have you on the show before you, you go big. You can run, mm. but you can't hide. We're going to hide your ass on special report. Yeah. And like I said, special report, <clears throat> please tune in this coming up Tuesday. Professor Griff will be on special report. Uh, yeah. And, you know, like I said, I already had John Lear. Uh, I already had Joe Judge Brown on special report. Special report, you know, is, uh, uh, I guess, my own entity. But apparently Dimebag's going to be crashing the party. On next Tuesday, which is, you know, he's he, gonna, he don't he, have the shit cracking. They'll be like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but, <laughs> he didn't bite me, so I invited myself. <laughs> Professor Griff, sir, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're watching tonight, we are totally looking forward to this interview coming up. And um, also, I uh, want to give a shout out to, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to give a shout out to Jane Elliott. I, I know the first time you was on the show, the audio was kind of messed up from my point of view. Jane, I want to have you back on the show on Special Report, and we're going to do it right, me and you. I know we're going to crush a lot of sacred cows, but uh, I am, folks. Jane Elliott will be on Special Report because I'm going to make it my duty to get her on there. If all you lazy son of a bitches that's too lazy to click on go to True Power Master Special Report, I'll have the latest two episodes of Special Report. Sometime this weekend. Yeah. It might be tomorrow. It might be tonight. It might even be Sunday. I don't give a fuck when I put it up there. I'm so it will be up there. there. So you just look yeah. out for that. And uh, if you want to see it live, you want to catch, you want to get the shit when it's airing, you need to go to True Powers Mind on YouTube. Yes. You know, it's only a couple or of Facebook. Days. On Facebook. On Facebook at True Powers Mind. And watch the shit live. That's more important than watching the rerun. What with you, folks? Yes, and thank you once again for all of the people who donated. Uh, do you want to get the Patreon account out? That's uh, patreon.com slash dimebag TV. If you want to help out the show, in this month, we're going to go feed some homeless. Yes, sir. We're going to talk to some homeless people so you can understand the situation because everybody is in a fucked up situation, it's just at a different degree. And we ain't talking about black, white, we're talking about all human beings. Right. You know, and I want to reiterate this, yo. For those of you who may be misinformed or whatever I'm about, I'm about humanity as a whole. Not just humanity that looks like me, but as a whole. Right. Because we all have something very valuable to bring. Even that little motherfucking person you can't stand has something to bring to the table. That's why they're here right now. So this has been the other morning show. I'm True Powers Mind. And I'm Dimebag Dolly. I'm your boy Cobra Mortal. And we're out. Peace. 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 Have a good one. Thank you.